that you are You are my linen garment I put on Lord, you are You are my linen garment I put on While I minister to In the inner court They shall not gird themselves with anything That causes sweat They shall not gird themselves with anything That causes sweat Lord, you are You are my linen garment I put on In the inner court Oh, your garments smell of earth And aloe of acacia Well, hello. <laughs> We've got a table full of props, bundles of giant edible plants like this wonderful great mullen. Did you know how good mullen is for you and how great my wife is for me? Hi, guys. Hi. It's been a while. Long time. Chelsea's feeling Long a little rusty. rusty. She's feeling a little rusty, but don't worry. We've got new oil. Like the... Like the manual grain mill. Like the grinding your own grain the old-fashioned yes, way. Yes. Sweat-witty. Mm -hmm. This is how you get salt in your bread, remember? Grinding your grain manually. Anyways, it's been quite a while. But that's okay, because we're back. And you know what? We are so excited to actually give many of you a welcome. 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 There's been quite a few new Shalomi homies out there in the groups these days, whether that's becoming a Linenite on our Facebook page or you're a new subscriber to our youtube channel or you're part of the becoming a linenite buy trade or sell or donate group you're becoming a millenite you might even be becoming a millenite <laughs> some of you are even becoming gibberim i know there's a lot out there i really wanted to do another one called becoming a gideonite read judges six no. epic epic but chelsea was like too no. many too, too many. many too many no so anyways we're becoming immersers that's the new one. Oh no <laughs> today we're going to talk about what this is really all about because i've noticed there's some lack of clarity out there these days when it comes to newbies joining in and we just want to help everybody understand what we're all about and what becoming a linenite sorry there's little ones abounding out there in which we gotta be somewhat timid in our voices but we want people to actually have an understanding of what it is that this is all about and what it is we're trying to get people to be in passion for obviously the linen has adopted the grain. Oh, oh my. Oh, careful. You want to tell people what this is? It's a little... You want to tell people what dense, this is? Dense little barley loaf there. Oh my gosh, don't be shy. Barley's really good, guys. Why? It's so good for you. Why? Well, I... It's a grain. Tell them. It's... Tell them all about a it. A wheat? Is it a wheat? It's a grain. Man, it's, it's a grain. It's a, it's a, it's a seed for certain. <laughs> We didn't hustle up on our barley research, but it does contain something that's super beneficial for your soul. Tell them. Weren't the barley loaves? Yeshua divided the barley loaves Indeed. and the fishes. <gasps> Do you ever read that? Loaves. It's like the most famous miracle in the history of the Bible. Oh, that smells good. Oh, and it involved good. this, five of them and two fish, which is why we're going to talk about living water because fish love water, right? <laughs> they know better. And they like water that looks like this. <gasps> Crystal clear. Seriously, it's super good. But... This has something in it that's very unique to barley and not anything else has it. Do you know what it is? I don't. Beta. I, oh, I forget. What was it? Beta carotin, carotin? It helps it to be radio protective. Booyah. For your Do you know what that means? Check this out. Here's First a whole other thing. Facebook. Because let's just, oh, we got to get Becker's book. Go Check this it. out. We'll just interval. Pause. <sighs> 
show, show. You guys, I gotta show you something really quick. This moth looks like a shark's tooth. That's right. Some of you may be getting shark's teeth in your linen railroad packages. Now you know why. <laughs> Because there's moths shaped like They're sharks. They're not moths. <laughs> but I'm going to send two of you moths. Get ready. Oh my gosh. <laughs> wow. They'll You'll be cool. open your package and they'll fly. <laughs> and you know what they will have also do? Don't put them in with the wolf. They'll be nested in the cashmere. <laughs> oh, no, they love it. No. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. Don't do it. Watch me. Watch me. Hey, real quick. Do you know what's so special about barley? Barley. 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 Can, barley. barley. Thank you, by the way, to Sue Becker. Yes. Champion and stallion of truth. There she is. Sue Becker. <laughs> We love Sue Becker. Yes, we do. And we highly recommend Bread by Beckers, like this book, Homegrown Flower. This book has been so helpful. Why? Uh, because it's very difficult to find fresh grain, fresh milled flour recipes out there. I don't know about you all, but I have a difficult time finding the recipes. Or I'll find a really good recipe and then it just calls for the regular old white flour. And I'm not using regular old white flour. And the whole milled flour does act a little differently um so it just i don't know it's so helpful to have some recipes that all get called for the whole grains you know because here's the thing chelsea and i are obviously some peculiar people you know what i mean we get stranger every day believe me you <laughs> every single day but i've got plants behind me hiding that i'm just so excited to even show you i'm studying books on trees and mushrooms and yes horticulture and wild medicinals. I mean, we're all over the place, y'all. And we got to be like that because I think last time I read the scriptures, you know, which were all about like the sword of the covenant, which says you're supposed to be a peculiar, strange, funky little people. That's what he's all about. And we want people to be all about what he's all about because that's what becoming a Lindenite at the root of it really is. It's about doing biblical things, biblical ways. And about regarding the things that most of the world society in general has disregarded and cast off as old-fashioned, worthless, boring, or just dumb. And you know what? The Father, His Word, bread, like actual bread, linen, natural linen, women making clothing for real, the best thing ever. Women making bread, also savage level. Just amazing, decadent. Can I just tell you about the satisfaction level that will go through your life when you eat real food, you drink real water, and you wear real clothing? I'm not kidding. It will and transform you. Eat real you. bread. Oh, it will change your life. You know why? Because the world is full of poison. The world is full of disease, despair, hopelessness, physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, psychological warfare is all over all the time. And you know what the Lennonites are not about? that kingdom mm -mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. so like this our groups and like our channel like we're not we're not going to be the people that are just going to plug and repeat and replay everything else the world is saying out there and all of the fear and the terror and the drama that's going on out there yeah. we're not having it y'all mm -mm. there's plenty of that out there elsewhere and you guys are more than welcome to hunt that down anywhere else we went down that road for years y'all but you know what we have come to realize the most valuable thing we can learn and study and share with others is the biblical things, biblical ways regarding his treasure of his word and then finding the things that he says in his word and learning all about them. And like this woman right here, Sue Becker, has been doing that OG style for a long time. Original grinder. She's been doing that for a long time because the bread of life is Yeshua. He's the bread that came down from heaven. John chapter six. Lots of my videos, you guys, are available on YouTube for free. I put out videos and teachings constantly that go through a lot of these things where I read the scriptures and go through these verses. So go through our playlist, Becoming a Linenite or Becoming a Millenite, and you'll understand a whole lot more what this group is about and what our channel is really about. Because there used to be a time where I talked about other things a lot more often. Like that whole other world and that whole other kingdom. I wrote a book. Well, I'm glad you weren't pulling uh, out a machete. I was like, ah! Duck, duck, duck. <laughs> I've been known to do that. I have a whole series called Barefoot Brawling where people invite me to speak at their churches and I do it barefoot while wearing linen and I make them millenites and then I swing machetes. It's ridiculous. They don't know what I'm going to do next. But. Serious? All right, Jeremiah. If y'all haven't read Jeremiah 16, stinking read it. I just read the whole book. Can you read one book of the Bible a day? I challenge you. I challenge you. Read one book of the Bible every day till you get to the end. You know how long it could take you? I don't know. Different books, different amounts. But. 66 days, two months. I met a guy at that farm in Florida 
who woke up in the middle of that hook in the jaw moment, I'm sick and tired of sitting in traffic two hours a day, maybe I'm gonna paddle around all of Ireland in a kayak. Okay, did it. Took him about as long as it could take you guys to read the Bible. Just paddled solo in the open ocean of the North Atlantic. A dude, not like Superman. A dude, a mighty man taught me lessons I can't even start to read. Gave me the opportunity to go out in a kayak with him and paddle out and jump in a river full of alligators and swim right up to one and look it in the face. People are like, why? I'm like, because I want to know what they look like in their eye. I needed to know that. Checked off that bucket list item for me. It was amazing. I still got all my fingers, y'all. It went great. Jeremiah 16, 16, Yeshua teaches me how to fish. This is where Jesus said it. You ready? Check this out. Behold, I will send for many fishers, says Yahuwah, and they shall fish them. And after, and after what? Wait a minute. After what? After the fishermen. After the fishermen, Yeshua raised up and taught them how to fish. After them, I will send for many hunters, and they shall hunt them from every mountain from every hill and out of the holes of the rocks, for my eyes are upon all their ways. They are not hidden from my face, neither is their iniquity hid from my eyes. And first I will recompense their iniquity and their sin doubly because they defiled at my land and they filled at my inheritance with the carcasses of their detestable and abominable things. That's what that book talks about. Detestable and abominable things that happened. I expose that because he is not looking away from it. And I can't get a single Christian church to invite me onto the stage to talk about one thing that's detestable. Why? Because that one's influenced them. But don't worry, there's good news. Oh, Yahuwah, my strength and my fortress, my refuge in the day of affliction, the other people shall come unto you from the ends of the earth. And shall say, surely, our fathers have inherited lies, vanity, and things wherein there is no profit. Shall a man make an Elohim unto himself when they are not Elohim? Therefore, behold, I will this once cause them to know. I will cause them to know that my hand and my might, and they shall know my name is Yahuwah. This is your call. This is your duty. You are sitting in this room because you woke up and said, my father taught me lies. Yes, you inherited lies. Welcome to the hunter's club. That's what you're here to be. Your duty is to hunt the souls of men. Your duty is to recognize that you're in a war. Gear up. This is a tiny shield. You're made to carry it everywhere you go. You ever read this? It says Psalm 91, Yahuwah, his word is my shield and buckler. This is a buckler. It's like a tiny shield and it doesn't look super great from this angle, but I promise you it's really effective in combat. Okay, you know why? Because if you go out there with a giant shield on your back and you just try to eat lunch, you can't sit down, you're tired, you know what you do? You leave your shield at home. You're like, that stinking thing sucks to carry. I don't ever want to carry a shield again. Welcome to the buckler world. This is an everyday carry tool. This is a buckler. It is designed so that you can carry your machete, <laughs> your working blade. I use this on farms. I used to think that this is all the thing I could do to disarm people physically disarm them. I'm not being like theoretical in that. It works very well for that job. It also works great at chopping bamboo steaks for my tomatoes that I grow. It's amazing. It's a functional tool. I use it all the time. It's short, it's compact, and it's crazy good at chopping. It's awesome. I love it. And you know what happens? I can carry this on my person. Generally, most people don't freak out sometimes. The buckler is made for you to carry because you know what happens? It will stop a sword. This is stinking plastic garbage. And it stops this super savage sword. Like you're going to war and you don't go out in your armor. What's wrong with this picture? That's why everybody's dead. That's why they're all dying. 
Because nobody taught him about the sword and the shield and the armor. Where is it? We need people to raise up a generation who is mighty, who knows how to fight, who knows how to defend themselves and guard their sword hands so the enemy doesn't cut their hands off and instead teaches people how to make our fingers ready for battle and make our hands ready for war. This young man right here, this mighty Gibberim, and this other one sitting in the back of the room over there, those young men are teaching me how to be a warrior again. 14 year old, right there, stand up please. Daniel, that is Daniel. That is a mighty Gibberim. You know why? You ever read Numbers? You know that book that people used to mock in the Bible? You wanna put yourself to sleep, read Numbers. Are you kidding me? Numbers is savage. You want to read Numbers? Start in chapter 22 if you're lazy. 22 through 25, you're going to read about Balaam, the doctrines of Balaam, the super sorcerer, like the sorcerer of all. He's the Illuminati of his day, <laughs> right? He's the one all-seeing eye. He's the bad guy in the room. He blesses Israel because you can't curse what Yahweh says is blessed. Out of his own mouth, he said that. He tried. The guy, the kings of the earth offered him all the gold. If he would just come over here and curse Israel. Somebody curse Israel, please. They're going to slaughter us. That guy tried. He blessed him. He blessed him three times. His blessing we still repeat to this day as a blessing of Israel. And then you know what happened? He connived another way to get them. He seduced them with the doctrines of Balaam. If you read Revelation, you'll read about the doctrines of Balaam. You'll read about the throne of Zeus and the throne of Satan and Pergamon. And the doctrines of Balaam that will work again to seduce Israel, so Yahweh will curse us. But don't worry, one Gibberim stood up. Out of the congregation, one stood up and took a spear in his hand and he ran it through the monsters that were in there defiling the sanctuary and stopped the plague of Yahweh. Daniel did that. I stood with him and his father in his house till two in the morning. We were melting minds, all of us collectively reading the scripture, talking about all this stuff like we've been talking about here. And you know what Daniel realized? He had an idol in his midst. For him, it came in the form of an Xbox. And he said, this thing is opening up my heart, my family, my little brother to demons, to nightmares, to terrors, to the things that steal our peace. So you know what we did? He took his Xbox out in the woods at two in the morning, picked up a giant splitting mall and smashed that thing. <laughs> And you know what happened? He became a Gideonite. Read the book of Judges. He was called a Gibberim. He rode up. He rose up. And he said, I will obey the voice of Yahweh. The angel of Yahweh told Gideon, get up and go tear down your father's idols. Uh-uh. <laughs> like, I'm a dude. He's like, you're my Gibberim. He's like, well, I'm a dude. I'm like... Pounding out wheat in a wine press, bro. Giant army over there. Hundreds of thousands of humans here to slaughter us if I do otherwise. He says, go tear down the idol in your father's house to conquer them. What? So he does, but he's scared. So he does it at night with 10 other dudes. It's a pretty smart move. You know what happened? After the idol came down and all the people came to murder him, his father rose up. That's Pete, his dad. Gibberim number two. His dad saw what his son did. And he realized, I should have done that a long time ago. And he took his idols out of his house and smashed those things. Actually, he shot him in the face with a tiny air pellet. It was beautiful. It was wonderful. It's precision shooting at its finest. He destroyed the idols that were in his house. He's raising up his sons to be mighty. Because you know what? The children are watching you. They're watching you. If you turn off the black mirror, suddenly they have nobody else to look at in the room but your face. It's super unpleasant at first. Trust me, it's exhausting. And you're going to have to work harder. But don't worry, the sweat of your brow, it's what you're here for. Work harder. Do you know how we defeat him at the end of it? Do you know how I defeat the dragon of old? I outlive him. I outlive him. That's the one thing at the end of our lives that will matter. Is do we go through the fires of tribulation and let our flesh be burned now. That we tear our idols down now. And we take back this kingdom. And we occupy until he comes. And know that he will throw that one into the flames forever. 
He will give me immortality. I want to live forever with him. I want to be free. I am so exhausted. I am so tired. All I cry for, all I beg him for is land. Please, Father, give me land. I am so exhausted. I want to cry. I want to cry. I have children for four years. They cry every day and I don't get to cry. I was made to be silent. I hated that. I just wanted to be able to cry and scream. Somebody save us. You sure? Save me. Have mercy on us. Remember your people. This is for us. I just want that. I wanted somewhere I could go and scream. And instead I live on other people's land and I live in other people's parking lots and I can't do that. It's unreal how frustrating it is when you can't just go scream. I know you guys, you're all been told and brainwashed to believe you shouldn't be screaming in public either. It's super awkward. <laughs> Trust me, I just tried it. So you know what I did? I've been battling that rage. For four years, I've been bottling up those screams and it's venting out and it's killing my marriage and it's killing my family and it's killing my friendships because I'm so frustrated I can't get it out. I used to get it out through this. I used to think this is the only way that I could scream. It's a lie. The world needs to hear our screams. There's a day commanded for you to go and scream. The day of atonement, the Yom Teruah, you are to go and scream, cry, wail, beg him, save us. That's what his feasts are for. I needed that for my identity to be secure. You need that for your identity to be secure. You are Israel. You were made for such a time as this. The days are evil, but you were born for them. You are a righteous people. You are kings. You are priests. You are the kings of the earth. You are sovereign to submit to his sovereignty. Or you can be like everybody else and be your own man, your own woman. And you can be sifted by vanity. Yahweh says he will sift us by vanity. And he has the black mirrors, the silver mirrors we look at every day, put on our beauty masks. Liars convinced you, you are not beautiful. Liars convinced you women that you don't matter and belong in the home. Liars, thieves, murderers. They're stealing from you your children. They're stealing from you your marriages. What are you going to do about it? Are you gonna bow down and take it? Or are you gonna fight? Cover those mirrors, every mirror in your house. Cover it with the sword. Cut vanity off your face. Cut it off your children before they're raised in it. Show them that, yeah, you know what? Mommy used to be like that, but now she's not. My wife, different woman. Seven years ago when we got, eight, nine years, ooh, ooh. Nine years ago, somewhere in the ballpark of I'm sleep deprived and tired because I have children in region, we got married. She looked like a completely different human. So did I. You know what happened? We got walked out of the image of who we were and we became the image of who he is. We were being transformed. My wife used to never go swimming for treasures with me. She'd look at this and be like, yeah, that's great, honey. You go out there. I look great today. I'm sitting on the beach. I'm serious. She didn't sound like that ever. But in my head, she looked great. And she was sitting on the beach. And I was treasure hunting for her. It's awesome. Until one day, you know what happened? She realized she swallowed the hook of vanity. That you know what? Beauty masks and hairdos and looking good and outfits and beauty were what made her pretty. But you know what? This is the truth. I call her in the beginning chapters of my book, a dusty sapphire. I wrote this years ago and I went looking for some way to wash her. And you know what I found it? In the living scriptures. I'm commanded as a husband. If you're a husband, you're commanded to wash your wife in the water of the word. You know why? Because she is a gem, one of a kind, the most beautiful specimen in all of the world and she's yours. 
She said, treasure her, adore her, smash your idol if it's making you think there's anything other more beautiful in the world. Murder your idols, men. Take violence to your idols. And you know what will happen? Your marriage will be restored. You will understand covenant is so powerful. And your wife will be renewed. She's taken off the beauty masks. She is jumping in the rivers with me and our daughters. And she is delighted to serve in her household for the wonderful benefits. She just put out a video that's called Repurposing Your Destiny. And it's about her making clothes for our family. She's a totally different woman than RN Chelsea when I met her. Working hard at the nursing station. Miserable. She used to say, I feel like a whore for the money, honey. I hate this. I'm in a system of corruption and evil and lies. And I'm poisoning people and I hate it. She is a righteous woman now. She's been sanctified. She's being transformed. She has a better identity now. And we've discovered that in this fabric of gladness. Oh yeah, Linen. Check this out. Real quick. Linen is your armor. Read the Bible from beginning to end. Question. Rhetorical. What was Yeshua wrapped in? Linen. When he was born. Linen. When he died. Linen. What are the angels, the heavenly host, the mighty army angels, what are they wearing? Linen. You got it, Blossom. <laughs> Out of the mouths of babes and suckling nursing infants, he is appointed praise. This is your armor. It blocks static electricity. It will shield you from the total onslaught of the dragon. Literally, I'm not exaggerating. If you didn't wear it, Ezekiel 44, 17, you would die. Don't put anything on your body that causes you to sweat. There's fabrics that cause you to sweat. There's also ones that conduct electricity to poison you all the time. You're all sitting on it. Welcome to the world of nightmares. <laughs> we walk on it. The whole polyester, it's we sit on petroleum, we wear petroleum, and we wonder why the spill in the gulf is the bad news. Like, this is an organ, y'all. Your face, your arms, your skin, your loins. These should be taken care of. Not with petroleum. Put real fabrics on your body. Eat ugly food. Fundamentals. Get barefoot. Oh, I'm not even kidding. Get barefoot. Take the poison off your feet and put your feet on the ground and watch what happens. It'll change you. It'll hurt like crazy. Other people's life. But since Chelsea and I started going down this road, it's produced life in so many areas. And so many people have come along in our life and surrounded us and taught us all about these other things that we didn't know. Sue Becker is one of those people that did that. And she even helped us to understand a whole big problem that we've been dealing with when it comes to people's objection to grain. We're going to get there. Hang on. But one of the things that she told us in this book, beta glucans, barley loaves, lay off. So barley, it contains something that will give you an armor for the warfare that you're all just being dosed in continually. It says, new research even indicates that beta-glucans may be radioprotective, meaning that they may help our bodies stand up better to radiation therapy and nuclear emergencies. Do you want to talk about a nuclear emergency that's taking place on every single day in all of our lives? Electric dragons. <laughs> I'm going to hit her so many times with this book There's on accident. There's a lot of props coming I'm in. Sorry. I have a table full of props, and I love props so he much. He really I does. really do. There's one. Giant gemstone. That's a ruby. Sapphires. If you guys didn't know it, we're also all about rocks. Look how pretty. That's it. it grows that way, y'all. I didn't cut that stone. No man raised up a metal tool to that stone. That's a rough cut, unhewn stone. And it's a ruby. I found that in a what bucket. A beauty. <laughs> we're all about that. One of my favorite comments I've ever seen in the history of my life the other day happened when some post, someone posted a comment that said, hey, here's an awesome article about stones, gemstones, in the Bible. Nice. And somebody commented back and said, have you ever seen Nathan and Chelsea Reynolds? And the guy wrote, literal rock stars. <laughs> <laughs> that pumped me up. You know why? Lepidolite. I just love saying that. He loves rocks so much. <laughs> I love rocks so he much. He loves them so much. We have an entire series called Nature we Nate. which many. just Can I show you guys what's on my dash? I should totally do it. This is me rolling in a clip of what I've done to my wife's house. <laughs> I had to rein them in. I finally had to set a boundary. Because I'm gluing them on every surface on the entire RV. There's very few places left in this house. I'm even gluing them to my steering wheel. 
because we live in an RV. If you didn't know that about the Reynolds, we're mobile, which is scary if you live in other states because someday we could just roll up there. And it's scary when you're <laughs> gluing rocks and seashells all over <laughs> the RV with teeth. hot glue and then our our rig is driving down the road and these, I'm like, wait, are these little things gonna fall off? Are they gonna just start going? <laughs> How many have fallen down while we're driving? Two. We lost a fossilized seashell and I think a crystal or a rock or something fell down. Obviously, a something treasure. big. Something, something big, big fell big down. Now, down. I did make my wife a spice rack What's out it of called? a giant Dugong piece. Dugong ribs. Dugong ribs. Probably Nephilim ribs, which is a whole other Genesis <laughs> those 6 talk. Are dense. <laughs> <laughs> Don't glue those. Don't glue those up there. But I discovered hot glue because my wife's amazing oh. and showed me. An This is where Chelsea slinks away out of the camera's view. <laughs> oh, no. Way too loud. Too loud. We woke the baby. We didn't even get very far. We're only a little bit in. Let me try and go put her down. Put a light. down. Welcome to my house of rocks. Nature Nate's Mobile Museum. Let's see, we've got sapphires and topaz and King's crown and lapis lazuli and beautiful topaz crystals. Come on. Coquina, the armor of the sea. Beautiful granite. Parrotfish fossil. Beautiful cones from Florida. Alphabet cones, shark size, rubies, emeralds, cabochons, tiny little, very peculiar fighting conchs. Labradite. More topaz. I love topaz. Beautiful. There's a fossil of a giant lettered olive. There's another giant lettered olive, non-fossilized. Dinosaur bones, chunks of armor, very peculiar tooth or bone looking thing. Oh yes, dugong ribs. That's them broken in half. That's what they look like intact. That's one broken half. Awesome. More bones, giant king's crown, crown conch. Obsidian, shark's teeth, coral, come on. A tiny bead Chelsea gave me when I met her before I went to Afghanistan. Sea bead, <laughs> vertebrae, king's crown, periwalk, maybe, no, periwalk, no. True tulip, Neptune's trident. This is just so cool. Aquamarine, it's just lovely. I love it. There's a piece of flint I found in Texas. See? Garnets from the Appalachians. More garnets. Sapphires. It's just a living museum. There's jadeite. Jade. These are. This is Chelsea's little fossil corner. These are all ones she found at a beach. And that's so fun. Giant tulip she found. <laughs> it gets better everywhere you go. <laughs> These are all fossils of seashells that we find just their same friend on the other side. Oh, yes. Yeah, turn on the lights. Shark teeth. Another banded tulip. That's my favorite. Mammoth bone. Triceratops horn. Megalodon tooth. Whee! Megalodon teeth. Giant bone fossil I found with Naomi. Oh, piece of the moon. <laughs> <laughs> Tectites, canadermal, can, canadermal <laughs> lucidum. Moon, you know. Look at that. Those who know what's up, go look at the kingly armor, making the kingly armor video. Canadermal lucidum, rishi mushroom. I found that. It's amazing. Check out Forage. making gibberim gum. <laughs> <laughs> Giant ruby, hey, topaz. Yeah. These are all Chelsea's. My these mama. are Chelsea's little homies. Oh, look at those. You want to tell them about any of these? Alligator tail. Alligator tooth. Some kind of other tooth. <laughs> Some kind of vertebrae. Vertebrae. Turtle shell. What's that one, Joel? It's from the gem mineral fossil show. Labradite. Labradite. <laughs> and there's our little tulip collection. Dandy tulips are like my favorite shell ever. Should we get it? They're big. Do you want to show them what happened over here? Oh, there's lapidolite. And what here's another, to, this was my sapphire corner over what here. What happened over here? Oh. Oh yeah, one day I was baking artisan bread. 
Maybe they can for see a little my bottom. toaster that, oven was so pretty? my toaster oven was at 450 degrees Obviously. in this tiny little space. And all Nathan's gemstones that he neatly <laughs> glued up here started coming down and going tink. Tink! I kept hearing this crash, and I'm like, what is happening over here? And then I was watching the glue just like melt and they'd be peeling. The hot glue came apart. So There's don't garnets. glue them above your oven <laughs> area. I agree. My hand shaking that much? There's corals. Beautiful corals. There's another little Chelsea nook. Yeah, those are mine. Those are Chelsea's little nooks. Beautiful. It's good. There's that bamboo spice rack I made. That fell down on my head this morning. Don't worry. I picked it back up. I was making pancakes out of living bread. And the counting of the Elmer. Here, we're counting the Elmer. We're finishing out the counting of the Elmer. Lots of That's our Elmer counter from seashells we found. Let's see. What else? Oh, yeah. See? The study of the languages. Learn Hebrew! It's so amazing. Paleo Hebrew by Eric Seffer. Eric Seffer, sorry. Eric Bissell. <laughs> <laughs> He's suffering life. There you go. Check those out. Boom, boom. Let me just give him the full picture, though. It's like a museum, right? It's so fun. Those are lightning walks and lettered olive. That's where lightning walks come from. Tiny seashell eggs. Boom. There's another one. This is so fun. This is what makes our life memorable. Every one of these is a little memento of Yahweh's wonderful love for us and his people. Because he made beautiful shells. He didn't have to make shells pretty. But he did because he's pretty. Pretty amazing. Look at that one. Anyways, this is my house of rocks. Oh. Let me show you my steering wheel of glory. <laughs> Gemstones! So they light up while I'm driving. That's the best. Boom! Lepidolite! And a giant fossil down, of course, right there. That's life. Glue shells to walls. It's terrific. People will be so enthused to look at your house. Just a oh you guys gotta just bear with us because it's been a while since we did this and we're so obviously overflowing with enthusiasm and there's one thing about the reynolds and Lennonites: you guys should be bundles of joy and enthusiasm yeah. and love so be kind to each other don't you feel good in your garments of gladness i'm so excited i'm wearing linen right now ah! no it's real i went hiking around in the woods the other day and i thought well, I don't want to get a bunch of ticks on me, and I don't want to tear my nice linen pants. So this I... is TikTok, biblical style. <laughs> so I put on my, uh, what were they? My nylon... 511. 511 tactical Maybe. pants. Yeah, that was for when the end of the world was going to yeah. come, and we need to be battle ready. So I saved a pair just so that I would have my tactical pants, my rugged pants, for the woods. So I put them on right away. Too tight. They felt too tight. I'm so used to this billowy flowiness and this airflow going on around my whole body. It was already too tight. And I was like, oh, then I have to wear a belt. And that's kind of confining. <laughs> oh, man. And so anyway, we're hiking around on this property. And I just felt hot. I wasn't getting airflow. I felt stifled. I felt constricted. And by the end, we get in the car to drive back home. And I, I had thought about bringing some linen pants to change into, but I didn't. And I regretted it for like the hour drive home. She was so nauseous. I was miserable. She was nauseous. I was just like, yeah, these pants are so gross. Like, I can feel it. Like, they're toxic. Like, I need to not wear these. Which brings us to a great discussion. It just tells me that I've been wearing linen so consistently that when I go back to wear the unnatural fibers, you feel it. You notice it. Your body's like, ew, rejection, rejection. It doesn't want that. It's like, what are you putting on me? This is poison. This is toxic. Like, what do you have on my body? Get it away. And that's where illness actually comes from, y'all. Like, this is where disease comes from. Toxins. And when you, real quick, I'm going to roll in a sweet clip of you guys seeing where polyester comes from. Because if you didn't know it, I always tell people it's just melted down trash bags. They fill up like the old rotting plastics. Everybody's like, recycle and save the earth. That's not what's saving the earth, y'all. No. Because you know what they're doing? They're buying that and making it into poisonous clothing. Hustling. And then selling it to you for a premium. That's not poisoning. The, that's not saving the earth from poison. It's just poisoning more humans. Instead, they're like, eh, we'll make human bodies the factory that disposes of our garbage. Check out hydrofluorosilicic acid. Heavy metal in your water. Anyways. 
toxins get into our body and they make us ill for real. Makes sense, right? You think about it, it makes sense. (laughs) This is why Leninites, Melanites, you should be readers because here's the reality. You can learn a lot from a video. I'm glad each of you chooses to watch one of our videos. I encourage you to watch it all the way to the end because I put all kinds of oodles of stuff in there that are not expected. Like if the title says, fighting fire with birds, it's not really what it's about because you can't encapsulate an hour and 40 minute teaching in one title. But that one was all about songbirds and how when birds sing in the morning at sunrise, they tell the plants to open up their tiny little pores on their mouths. Plants have mouths on the bottoms of them called stoma. Here's my plant buddy, Great Molin. Right there, if you look super closely, you still won't see them because they're super <laughs> tiny. But just like the bottom of your feet have pores, why you should walk on barefoot on white hot? grass. Could you wipe your bottom with it? Yeah. You know what we used to call this? Chelsea, what did we used to call this? What? Indian toilet paper? <laughs> It and is. it's and it's good for that. Nice. If you want to do natural things natural ways, wipe your butts with great you mullen. You can also make a tea with it. Yep, tea with it. What else could you do with it? Oh, and it's um the great mullen. The the Appalachian cold remedy. You can fix yourself from a cold by drinking this. Hey Chelsea, did you recently, well I guess a while ago, ask me to get some poison medicine from the store for you? Oh my gosh. Yes. I was I was sick for a while. I was sick for um, a good minute. You got exposed to some toxins. Mm-hmm. And I was coughing, and I was hacking, and Wretched. I had mucus coming out of everywhere. And I was coughing so bad one night that I couldn't sleep. And I was like, I don't know what to do. And I even had pulled out all the natural remedy stops, right? And I was, like, doing cherry bark and... Um, slippery elm. Slippery elm. Which is super and good. marshmallow root and all these different things. And... Anyway, it it was helping for the throat, but it wasn't helping with the tickly, itchy cough when I was trying to sleep. Anyway, I was like, honey, I think I need some pharmaceuticals. I'm desperate. She asked me to go buy her drugs. <laughs> desperate. I'm just admitting this. This is real life. I was desperate. So he was kind and went to the store and he brought me back a cough syrup. And I flipped it around. He goes, oh, it's got a bunch of poison in it. You sure you want to drink it? <laughs> I flip it around and read the ingredients. One of the ingredients, I am kidding you not, it was polysorbate 80. Spermicide, guys. In the cough syrup. That's supposed to go in your throat. What? Why? What? Yeah. Because medicines that they sell us as medicines are poisons. They're literal poisons. The only way it can be a drug is if it poisons you. Isn't that terrific? Like, you can only be a drug if it makes you sick. That's disgusting. That's disgusting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're not in the business of making people well, healing people, helping people. They're in the big business of, Mm. we want more money. And we want to kill you. Just slowly. Long Mm -hmm. enough for us to sap your soul and all of your money as we do it. That's the kingdom of darkness. And if we can give you more medications that will cause more problems, then you'll have to buy more medications from us. And generally, that's how you feed a system of repeat customers, right? (laughs) But here, the Leninites group and all this stuff, we want to make sure you guys understand we're all about talking health stuff because you know what? That's super imperative to understanding biblical things in biblical ways. So important, The Father loves talking about health and he loves talking about the things that are good for you and the things that are super toxic and bad for you. And he has a way of discussing that and it's from Genesis to Revelation. That's right. Beginning to end. He starts in the garden with plants and you know what he ends with? Plants. Giant trees that their leaves are for the healing of the nations. Whoa. It's pretty dry. I'll admit it. Harry? Harry. But just like your lungs, well, which is why you can water. smoke this. I'm not kidding. You guys who like to smoke stuff, I don't mind that at all. You know <laughs> what I mean? It's I get it. I used to smoke a lot of hookah when I was a teenager and a <clears throat> doofus. It happened. <laughs> But you know what Indians and people used to smoke after they smoked tobacco? This, the Great Molin. You can dry it and smoke it. And you know what it does? It cleans out your lungs. Fantastic. Go figure. But there is an amazing thing that the father did when he created the tree of life. Mm. Because he is all about restoring health. And that's medicine. And that's what we believe in talking and teaching and sharing with people about is our quest for restoring our health. Because you know what? Chelsea did not have the best health when I met her. Super bad. Yeah. Like she was borderline dying when I met her. Unwell, right? I was 
doing better at that time in my life, but I still was a rancid ball of kidney stones and bleeding and just misery and, and you're chronic just surviving, pain. Surviving, you know, you're you're surviving on caffeine because mm-hmm. you're so exhausted and you Mountain Dew don't feel well, Oof. and then you're surviving by drinking lots of alcoholic beverages mm-hmm. because you're you're so discontent with your life. Your soul hurts. Yeah, it's so sad. So. That's what we've been on a quest for for the last <clears throat> 10 years. I mean, I met... I really need spring water. Oh, my. Those hairs are tickling me throat. Like, Chelsea and I have been together 10 years. What? And, whoop, 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 oh, whoop. Coming up. Coming up. Ish. <laughs> I've known her longer than that. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. But when I met her, we were very different people. Yeah. And, like, different. unrecognizable. Yeah. From the way we are now to the way we were then. And that's a good thing. Maybe <clears> I'll drop in a picture. Just so you guys can see it. If you watch Chelsea's <laughs> video, so uh, it'd be good for you guys it. to see it because it's not the same kind of people. And oh you know what? God. That's what the father wants. When we encounter the father, when we, when we encounter his word and we, it should be a transformational thing. It's not, I prayed a prayer one time and then my life was basically the same the rest of my life until I died. That's the version of biblical living I grew up hearing about and seeing. Mm. But you know what? I've got to see these strange, peculiar people out there now over the last few years. And they're fantastic because they've been transformed from who they were and they're becoming who he is. Mm. And that's what I want in other people. I want to see that happen in other people's lives. And you know what's so great about the becoming a Lenonite and the Millenites is we've got to see people's transformations happening in the flesh, in person, and sometimes from afar. And for a lot of you guys, that's a community that we love. And I know you guys love too. And Mm. We want you guys to share those transformations that have happened in your Please life. Please share your testimonies. We, we want to see that. And we want other people to be encouraged by that. The the wonders that you're finding in the word, the wonders that you're finding in natural foods and forage or medicines and apothecaries, whatever. We love that stuff. And we want you guys to feel comfortable sharing that out with each other. Yeah. And, and telling people about how the creator of hope has been changing your lives mm. because he did that for us. He transformed my wife through a process over years and years of years mm. to make her nothing like the woman she was when I met her because she would have never said those same things you just heard her talking about of caring about those things. And that's why she shared a video which is called Removing the Mask. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Removing the Mask of Vanity and yep. why she no longer wears makeup. And you know what? It's incredibly imperative for you guys to understand Vanity rules most of our lives. It is one of the greatest of idols and strongholds in men and women's lives all around the world. And you know what? Wearing linen and natural fibers and eating this way and living this way makes people feel self-conscious. They make you think about the way you look, the way you act, the way you are not part of that society anymore. And that's vanity talking. And so we go after that here. That's the becoming a Gideonite. Being a Gideonite is someone who tears down their household idols. Gideon tore down his dad's idols and changed the course of Israel's history because of it. And we want each of you to be willing to do that with the areas that he's entrusted you, whether that's just with your children, whether that's your friends, whether those are the people around you, to seek to destroy and kill those idols that have been raised up in our hearts because Mm -hmm. that's the whoredom, that's the adultery that's made us be separated from him. And in Hosea 1, he literally says, if you want to go be a whore with all these other people and be like those nations, Mm -hmm. and you say to them, let's just read it because this is fantastic. Here's a Bible I love because we began to study the scriptures and we're trying to learn Hebrew. Check this out. This is the hallelujah scriptures. They give Bibles away to free, for free, amazing humans. They also gave me the audio Bible version of this for free, which is a ton of work. Awesome. And it says here, it's got the paleo, it's got the Hebrew letters next to it. So as you're learning, you can learn both. It has the old and the new Testament, which is incredibly hard to find in English and Hebrew. But you ready for this? This is Hosea two. for their mother was whored. And she who conceived them has acted shamelessly. For she said, I will go after my lovers who give me my bread and my water, my wool and my linen and my oil and my drink. Therefore, see, I'm hedging up your way with thorns and I shall wall her in so that she does not find her paths. Means you'll be lost. Like your soul is trapped and you're in this rat race. Anybody else feel that way every once in a while? I know we did. We felt like we were completely lost and that basically we were always being opposed by the father. We wanted to sell our Mm. house for years and years and years and buy an RV and travel on the road. And continually, he was like, no, no, no. Like if you guys want to see where Chelsea and I were at kind of when all this began, you can watch an interview Chelsea and I did with John Pounders and Jake Grant. 
And it was, it's the, like one of the first videos on, of any I posted. Mm. I think it's called Secret Plutonium Weapon Sites and Child Trafficking or something like that. Anyways, it was dealing with the murderers that lived in our neighborhood who were literally killing children. Mm. Horrible situation. And we were still having to live there, guys, with an active cult of human beings who predated on children and engaged in witchery, witchcraft and sorcery. And it was an international case. It was horrible. And while they were there, people were burning Bibles and doing rituals against it at the time. Mm -hmm. That's where we were living. We were living in like the greatest heart of darkness that could be possible where they're finding bodies in houses in our neighborhood. It was horrible. We wanted out. <laughs> so bad. We wanted out and we were paying by requirement. We had to pay money we didn't have and go work jobs that we didn't want to work in order to be living there with a tiny little yard with two trees. So sad. We were miserable. We were miserable. And the father said, stay. Right by an airport. Too. Oh, Super noisy. horrible airport with all kinds of black operations, nightmares happening. It was brutal. And you know what? The father was like, that's it. He hedged us in there. He hedged us in there and wouldn't let us leave. And you know what? The father in his timing mm. began to draw us out of there because you know what happened though? We changed. We changed. We realized the circumstances around us, like all the list of nightmares going on out there, we can't change all that, but we can start by changing here. Mm -hmm. I can start by changing here and she can start by changing there. Well, that's where it has to change. You can't just go keep running. You can just keep running, mm -hmm. but you're never going to get anywhere. You know, if he would have let us go on the road, then we still would have had all of our baggage. Yeah. And that's what he's done, though, since then is began to show us where that baggage is and start to excise that, yeah. uproot that out of us. Yeah. And convict us. Mm -hmm. And our adulteries and our treacherousness for disregarding what he said. Like, these are the ways he wants us to live. And this is how he wants us to be a strange, peculiar people. And if we would turn back to him, he promises to give us that wool and that linen and that bread and that water and give it to us in abundance. And he has. He's taken us on this journey in the wilderness. And we love sharing that with you guys. Because for each and every one of you, you can start today making a transformational step by reading and regarding his words. And by sharing your love that you have found mm. in him and through him with everybody you can. Like we want people to be generous with the truth that you have found. And we want you to be loving and kind as you share it out. Mm. And so we ask if you guys are, are part of our Facebook groups. If you are, if not, no worries. But if you're a part of that and you see things that are maybe taking place, comments or, or yes. threads that are going oh, on yes, in there. Yes. If you guys see stuff that is outside of the frame of character traits that we see the expression of like the fruits of the spirit being exercised. Like, would you please help us by reporting those yes, to us? Please report because it. listen, Chelsea and I, oh. we live in a rectangle. You just saw a tour of it <laughs> and it goes all over the place. And sometimes we live in places for weeks without cell phone reception and we have to drive a long ways to get it. Yeah. And so we're not able to sit there like some of you all and have access to the internet on and a regular basis. Our season and situation where we're at right now is definitely limiting our access to the internet, mm -hmm. um, which is quite challenging uh with trying to manage our online group um and so we just ask you guys help us with that and yeah. pray that the father would help it find good stewards that could help do this with us because we need that too you know what i mean and so many of you guys are on there regularly and you can report if you see something that's going wonky to us and we would really appreciate that that would be a huge help yeah. and that you guys yourselves would also learn how to just be respectful and loving to each other and not be doofuses do you know what i mean like don't be mean for real. There's a lot of people who join our group who have no idea about any of the biblical side of any of this. Some people are just getting referred here because they heard about natural fibers. That's it. That's all mm. they have. They have nothing to do with biblical living. They know nothing about the scriptures. They know nothing about anything else. And be considerate of that. You know what I mean? Some people really do need to learn all about health. There's lots of people like right now, I'm on a super health study, like crazy binge study. This book, incredible. What really makes you ill? So why everything you thought you knew about disease is wrong. And this is by Dan, Don Lester and David Parker. Absolutely exceptional book because it's transforming everything I've come to be brainwashed in. And for her, she's a registered nurse and was serving in that field as a slave, as she would put it. <laughs> my wife here, one of those things when we were trapped in, when the father hedges mm -hmm. us in, my wife used to roll over in bed and say, I'm a whore for the money. She used to say that like she would wake up and scream curse words. My life every morning for months, I was never happy. not at all. And she was in an industry that propagated death 
disease and poison people regularly. She hated that. That was outside of the nature. She wanted to help and heal and mend people and tend to them. And she's a great nurse. Seriously. She stitched up my hands. <laughs> That's why I got them. She stitched up many people's. I've seen her dress wounds and bandage and heal and feed. And now she does it every time she bakes this bread. She literally is nourishing and healing my body and everyone else's we get a chance to share it with. And that book, really, I can't recommend it enough, guys. Go read books that will help you learn so much more than just Googling it or watching a video on it. You can learn and be transformed if you read all the way through a book. It's exceptional. And the Father has done that through his scriptures in our life. And we want you guys to be all about that and be fired up for that too. Another thing we wanted to share with you guys when it comes to becoming a Lennonite and some of the needs that we really have mm. is with clothing the naked. Because the Father said one of the things he would do is he would give that clothing back to his people if they would regard him. And we, as part of the linen railroad that we started, we go and hunt out linen and natural fiber clothings out of thrift stores. And we buy that and then we clean it to the best of our abilities. And then we roll it up in little packages. And then we fill it with gemstones and rubies and sapphires. And we send it to people for free because we believe Yahuwah wants to clothe his bride and that he is all about doing that. However, we have found an area of huge need that we have not been able to meet just by going to the Goodwill's outlet stores mm. the good, or the thrift stores. Do you want to talk more about that? Yeah, um, it's definitely with children's clothes, you guys, and bedding. I feel like those are the probably mm -hmm. the biggest areas. Children's clothes, baby clothes, mm -hmm. and bedding um, is really kind of hard to hunt at the thrift stores. Um, and we don't, uh, we're not able to acquire that very often. Um, and if we do, it's like 50%. Like a lot of the children's clothing that I've found, I think out of all of my hunting that I've ever done, I found one pair of 18 month old pants for my daughter Jubilee and they were 100% linen. One pair. That was it. And I, like it was a like year. a miracle pair of pants. I was like, what? These even exist because all the rest of the kids clothes I find, if it's a Naomi's size or Jubilee's size, which it isn't it's not very often that I even find something, but if I find something, it's usually probably an old Navy brand, um, and uh, old Navy or Gap, I think. And then, um, it's like 50% cotton and 50% linen, mm -hmm. some linen rayon blends as well, but it's always a blend. It's never hundred percent, uh, linen. Um, and anyway, the children's clothing is really hard to come by. Um, I'm not the greatest seamstress. I'm definitely still a beginner in many ways, uh, self-taught and just winging it as I go. But um, as I've even been sewing, I've even realized that trying to make clothes for my own children is kind of overwhelming. Just the thought of having to like you know, I don't, I don't like to use patterns to begin with, but anyway, trying to use a pattern, trying to sew these tiny little armholes and especially the baby clothes. Like, I'm like, I don't even know how people sew this stuff. It's so tiny. Um, but I've been trying to, you know, sew things here or there. But what I found is that repurposing clothing, you guys, that I find at the thrift store, if we find stuff that's small for women, small or extra small linen that we are finding, it's pretty easy to be able to repurpose it down and just tailor it like cut you know pulling pulling the sleeve or pulling the um the sleeves up you know and hemming here cutting the sleeves taking it in making it shorter um to modify it to be able to fit children has been one of the best things that i've found to be able to clothe my kids and i'm still not even there where they have like a whole 100 percent wardrobe like i'm trying to get them more clothed but it's hard it's hard to clothe your children and then they're outgrowing things just as fast as you're sewing it for them and then or they're shredding passing it them. yeah and then they're <laughs> passing it down to the next kid so it's it's tricky um so you moms out there, I get it. It's 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 hard trying to clothe your family. Um, so something that we wanted to come and bring to you guys as the Lennonites is that I know there's a lot of women out there who sew very well, who are incredible, incredibly gifted with sewing, and we need your and time. Help. Yeah, and more time rich than mm -hmm. a lot of the moms uh, with young kids that I know of on this group. They're like, oh, I want to sew, you know, and I'm trying to do all these things and I'm trying to bake bread for Hi, my family. Hi, fellow Millenite. Hi. Hi. I'm baking with mama. We're making some bread. I have a little dough bag. That's right. We're trying to answer some of your guys' questions and try to give you some answers. We definitely don't know everything and we're still new at this just like you guys. 
Uh, we are becoming Millenites still ourselves. So, you know, I'm trying to homeschool and I'm trying to do all these things. And it's just, you are, you're, you're time poor, you know? And so you don't have a lot of free time and you're staying up late at night to just sew one garment, you know, for your kid and whatever. But I know there's some people in this group who are extremely talented, have some time, um, and I'm just going to ask you to seek out the Father on this. Seek out the Father, pray to Him, ask Him if if He wants you to help use your giftings and talents towards the Linen Railroad, towards being able to help clothe these little ones of His, because it is so hard to get these little kids clothes, you guys. And like, I have people all the time contacting, contacting us through the Linden Railroad asking for kids clothes and I don't have anything to tell them and I don't have anything to give them. And it's really hard. I'm like, if I find anything, I'll let you know. But it's like, I, I found one little boy's, um, I think it, it's an 18 month old, one little boy's 18 month old shirt and it's 50% cotton, 50% linen. I found that the other day and that was like the first little boy shirt I've even found. So it's really difficult to close the, clothe these little ones. And I know there's so many people talented out there and we just want to just ask for help for the linen railroad. And if Yah's tugging on your heart, pray about it. But if he's tugging on your heart and, and you know, you're wanting to get involved with the linen railroad in a, in a deeper, more intimate way, we could seriously use your guys' skills and abilities uh, for the linen railroad. And if you're like, okay, well, I sew, I have, I have skills, I have time, um, but I don't have the means to acquire the linen uh, garments. I know there's even been people out there in the group who um, supply linen, they buy linen, you know, yeah. they're even willing to help and supply linen at, you know, discounted rates. Um, we find a lot of linen that we can't even put on the railroad because it has little things that need mending and I just don't have the time to mend it. So I have this pile of stuff, you know, linen that has a hole in it, has a, has a big stain, has a whatever, you know, that we just haven't been able to move on the, the railroad or it's just... It's not the most stylish thing, and it's vanity. I don't know, just People nobody just don't want wants it, sometimes. it, you know. And it, or it's a kind of a loud color, whatever, you know. There's there's different reasons why we can't move something on the linen railroad, or people just don't seem to be interested in it. But we have a lot of that linen, so we could always bundle up a package mm -hmm. and send it your way, and you guys could just start sewing the garments for us, and then we can communicate with how we want to get those on the on the linen railroad and actually get those to people in need. So I just wanted to talk about that because. That's that's been a huge need. Um, and also if you're like, well, I sew and I have time, but I'm, I don't think I'm that great of a sewer. Like it's okay. You guys like I'm not either, but we'll take anything right now, honestly. And, and so would people that have none. Yeah. People like, that have forget. nothing. They're like, don't I forget. would take a little dress that looks like a box or a little shirt. I'd take that, a handkerchief. Yeah, you know just, what I mean? I need to put something on my kid, you know, or like if you sew straight lines and you want to just, you know, you're like, I'm, I, I sew. Okay. I'm just going to. So, so a bunch of pillowcases for us, yeah. you know, even, um, like changing pad covers, um, uh, bibs. Oh my gosh, you guys like the little triangle bandana bibs for babies. Super easy. You could just sew a little button on it, like super easy. And, um, yeah, I mean, if you want to make bibs, um, menstrual pads, uh, bandages, oh my gosh, you guys bandages. Please. If someone could start cranking out linen bandages Please. and we could start giving those to people too in their packages that would be and amazing use pine resin to apply to your skin because honey, it's honey it's, sorry i get honey. excited anise oh honey i honey. thought you were talking to me yeah no no honey <laughs> raw honey like but raw also honey antiseptic yeah. pine resin yes, is yeah. an antiseptic and it's like a glue and it could go with your linen to stick it to your skin Anyways. but we really need linenites out there who want to just partner with the linen railroad we have, we've also had people come forward who are like i'm finding tons of linen i can hunt it Find and it. if you guys can start listening on our buy, sell, trade, donate page, that would be That's amazing. And you know what? I get it. Not everyone can just give it away for free. Um, if you can, that's amazing. If you can give the garment away for free and then just have people pay shipping, that's great too. Whatever you can do, it's it's just about getting that linen out there to the body uh, of believers and just helping to clothe these people and get them out of this terrible clothing. And something else I wanted to touch on too. When it comes to the the different materials and the different fabrics, I know in our Becoming a Linenite video, we talked about our journey to becoming Linenites and how I had the first pair of, the first piece of linen I ever had was 50% rayon or 45% rayon, 55% linen or something like that. But it was a linen rayon blend. 
And I will say this, you guys, because I know I've heard different things about like, oh, well, rayon maybe would pulp, but it's, you know, processed via, chem you know, harsh chemicals or whatever like that. That may be true. A lot of the chemicals are washed out of the garment. They're just using that chemical to kind of compress the fibers because how do you take wood pulp and make it into a fiber? I get it. But I'm still going to say this, that linen has such beneficial properties that even when it's paired with something like rayon, um you still can notice the difference, especially if you haven't been wearing any linen at all, mm -hmm. okay? So I'm going to just say that, that um, if that's all you can find in your area, I still think wearing a linen rayon blend would be, or a linen cotton blend would be better than not, you know? And some yeah. people are like, oh, well, rayon, you know, isn't as good as cotton. Well, cotton, you guys, if it's not organic cotton, it's GMO. It's got glyphosate dripped all over it. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's not bathed the best. Yeah, too. it's bathed in toxins too. So it's not the best either. But a linen cotton blend is still better than you wearing plain cotton. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so if it has linen with it, it's still, and as long as it's not linen and wool. Yeah. Or, or linen, linen and silk. silk yeah, I still don't think. Kinds. Yeah. You know, as, yeah. not, as long as it's not that, I still think the linen rayon or the linen cotton would be better than you just wearing, obviously, those fibers on their own, okay? And it's like, obviously, the 100% linen is the best. We're trying to get there. Mm -hmm. And I want to say this, too, with the Linen Railroad. When we're hunting linen, we're always hunting 100% stuff. Oh, yeah. Anything 100% we find, we snatch it up. We're going to put it on the railroad. But sometimes we find something in a really rare size, um, and it's a blend and it's a beautiful garment. We, we, I can't leave it. You guys, I can't leave it at the bins when it's like, like a dollar, it's out. like a dollar. You guys, I can't leave it when I know it's going to close somebody. So, yeah. you know, I'm not going to advertise the, the, the blends. A lot of times I won't advertise the blends, but we'll tuck them in the packages with the other hundred percent. So it's like you get a little bonus in there. Okay. Um, but anyway, this is kind of how the linen railroad operates and we're so excited and we want to be able to, to, um, get more garments out there. Like I said, just right now we're struggling with our self-service, so it's going to mm -hmm. be a little challenging, but we would love for you guys to reach out to us, uh, through our messenger. If you want to be a part of the linen railroad in a bigger way, um, whether that means you're going to be a distributor because you're finding lots of linen, whether that means you want to sew stuff for us, um, that, and you're, you want to be a distributor, like you want to hunt it, you finding tons of stuff, and then you want to sew it and, and turn it into little dresses or little boy shirts or whatever, and then you want to take those garments, we can help distribute it out. Uh, but we really need some seamstresses out there. I know you're or out there. Or even men. Come if on. If you sew, you I know men. some men sew. And that is some of you an sow amazing the, ability. Some of you sow the seed of the earth too. And I know you sow that grain into the fields. If you haven't, men, broadcast by hand grain into a field Ooh, do it. so salty try it be so good that's the kind of sewing we also need in abundance i saw somebody posted a picture from them sewing flax into their field yes. last year so cool. so cool so cool i know for a lot of you it's time to plant and it's time to get to the fields go do it take some wheat out there plant and wheat. Plant. Plant if you're all in the northerly latitudes you can grow wheat like nobody else can in the south. Grow some grapevines. Grow some grapevines. Grow vine. some fruit trees. Do it. Plant trees, y'all. Trees! Please. Telling you. Can I just, real quick. I've been reading the books of First and Second Kings simultaneously while I've been reading a book that's called Why Everything You Know We're Taught About the Civil War is Wrong. So good. Anyways, crazy war stories. Solomon, when he gets wisdom from Yahuwah, it says all the kings of the earth. So think about this real quick. Everybody that was in a position of power and authority and dominion came to Solomon. And what did he teach him first? About cedar trees. He taught him about trees. It literally says like the main oh. thing he taught them about of everything else Solomon could teach people, all the people of the earth, he taught them about trees. So my big study right now, and I can't wait to share more of it, is all about trees because it's super biblical. So biblical. If it starts with a tree and it ends with a tree, and a tree that is so awesome, the tree of life, you guys, bears a different fruit every month of the year. 
Come on. Don't you want to eat that? I want to eat that. And then it's leaves over the healing of the nations. That's just incredible. And we believe that the Father has put each and every one of you here for such a time as this because we are supposed to be like an oak of righteousness that spreads out its branches and provides shade in the heat of the day and provides food and sustenance for those that are hungry and despairing. And it mm-hmm. clothes the people. He clothes us, you guys, so that we can in turn go and cover the people who are walking in wickedness and idolatry and adultery with mercy and with compassion passion with love because you know what when you go through the books of first and second kings you're going to find a linenite and you're going to find the water is the cure to these people's souls because the word is the water Mm -hmm. you guys the water is the word to wash our souls and to revive us like my wife used to drink so much mountain dew what was that stuff baja blast baja blast guys Blast your kidneys apart. Just blasting your soul to pieces. You know what I mean? She used to drink that stuff like crazy. And you guys, if you drink soda, like carbonated beverages, carbonic acid, if you drink acid water with sugar poisons, I challenge you, leave it behind, you guys. Drink pure living crystals known as water. Findaspring.com. Oh, findaspring.com. Go find yourself a spring, y'all. Or just walk through the woods and pray pray he'll lead you to springs too yeah even if you live in the desert it's super biblical that people found springs coming out of the ground hey chelsea did we learn about someone who had a spring open up out of a very shocking place recently after a big battle he killed a thousand humans um samson oh samson Samson. it said it opened up a but a literal little spring coming out of a donkey's jawbone. Oh, or maybe it clapped in the rock. Oh, rod. yeah. Crazy. That is crazy. Kills a thousand dudes with a donkey's jawbone. Savage, first oh. of all, that the jawbone didn't break. But then Whoa. after that, he's like, I'm going to die of thirst. He's thirsty. I bet you would be pretty thirsty. I fought some humans in my days, and I was always thirsty afterwards. Dude was so thirsty, he was going to die. And the father opened up spring. And you know what he did? Drink, and it says his soul was revived. Mm. You guys who have sad weary, exhausted souls and the people all around you, they need it too. And you know what? You can water them with the word and sometimes you can just give them a glass of water because Yeshua said, if you give anybody a glass of cold water, you will not lose your reward in heaven, which is why I tell you guys, read this book called My Water Cure because the water really is the cure. Sebastian Knipe. He goes through why linen and cold water is basically the healing that you need for your life. It's also like half an apothecary book on finding and foraging herbal remedies and stuff like that. It's incredible. It was written in the 1800s. We want you guys to be living a vibrant and audacious, dangerous life because you are precious and treasured people. To each of you that has helped to contribute to the Linen Railroad and pay for each other's packages and pay so that somebody else could have garments of praise, fantastic. Thank you guys. You are tremendous. Thank you guys for the encouragement that you give to Chelsea and I through your kind words and just your lovely delight in his ways. We pray that you would be strengthened to go forth and do his will on this earth. We love you. And it blesses our hearts so much when y'all are posting pictures of the things that you're making and sewing and baking and and I just love it. I love it so much, you guys. Thank you. Keep it coming. Testimonies are powerful. They are indeed because the enemy, the dragon, that devil of old, is defeated by the blood of the lamb, the words of our testimonies, and not loving our lives even when faced with death. Mm-hmm. And so though we may be faced with death in every direction, you know what? Rejoice. Because our salvation, Yeshua, draws near. We love you. We'll talk to you soon.